Mark Rogers TV, the voice of Cal Lakes football. If you love the game that we love, uh, smash that like button, subscribe, and share the videos. We're talking TCU football with Billy Wessels from uh, TCU's Rivals platform, Purple Menace. Billy, how are you doing today? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. So we never looked to the top five or top ten to see a TCU recruiting class, but that certainly hasn't stopped a Gary Patterson from developing these players, looking for the right fit for the program and turning uh, many of his teams into top 10 caliber teams and big 12 contenders. Uh, your thoughts about this class that uh, rivals has ranked at number 29 in the country. Yeah, it's a typical Gary Patterson class. They're usually in the 25 to 30 range on how these things shake out by the end of the day. But these are guys that Gary Patterson wants and Gary Patterson likes. He's made this tradition of, of being a top 10 to top 20 team with guys that are kind of the the, the guys that Oklahoma and Texas didn't want, guys with a chip on their shoulder. Now he's starting to get some more of these four-star guys and they're competing for Big 12, Big 12 titles every year. So there's a couple more four-stars in here that we normally see, uh, but definitely a lot of scrappy guys that GP plucks off the, the discard pile from the bigger programs. Talking TCU football with uh, Billy Wessels from uh, the Rivals platform for TCU, Purple Menace. Uh, so in particular, what guys stand out to you? What guys do you really like? So the guy I probably like the most, I'm looking at my whole list here, so I don't make sure I don't miss anybody. Uh, Carter Johnson, defensive tackle from Ohio. Uh, it's rare, it's rare to see TCU go get a guy from up there, but he's 6'3, 286. And there's a video circulating the day of him at a Planet Fitness jumping on a five foot box. So you don't see guys that are 6'3 tall six feet three inches tall that can do that very often uh, he's awfully impressive adam plant is a guy who people might know his story might not uh, originally signed with arizona last year but didn't want to play for kevin Sumlin, so he sat out the whole year uh, so he's here and he's eligible to play right away and that's a big area of need for tcu uh, he was a so he's a four-star in the 2017 class so still a four-star here uh, he's six six two six he's just a giant human being and another big spot uh, that they'll need guys at is offensive lineman and Andrew Coker, 6'7", 335 from Katy, uh, was originally a Florida commit, but ended up winding up, winding up going to TCU. So there's some big names in the trenches there for TCU. I just actually, uh, about an hour ago, came back from a plan of fitness. I raised that thing about five inches, I think, is uh, what I go for. Uh, five feet's pretty impressive, especially from the big guy uh, there weighing in from something in the range of 285. All right, uh, Billy Wessels on the line talking TCU football. Uh, Billy, were there any um, last minute, last day gets that uh, turned this into a better class or maybe a few guys that got away? Yeah, so the guy that got at the end, uh, they got this commit on Tuesday, Keon Johnson, uh, Keon Stewart, sorry, defensive back from Houston, six feet 170. He's listed as a corner, plays uh, for a state champion team in Galena Park, North Shores, which is in the Houston area. Uh, He's not your traditional corner, though, so he's, he played a lot of corner, but he's more of a hard hitter. I bet he winds up at safety despite being maybe a little undersized for that position, but that's perfect for Gary Patterson. He's he's all about speed, baby. So uh, he's a guy that can fly around, lay the, lay the lumber, and get some big hits and force some, force some mistakes there. Uh, so he's a guy they added very late in the process. Dylan Jordan is a linebacker out of Kansas uh, that no one had really talked about until the last month, and he was – kind of waiting for Nebraska. Nebraska uh, came in kind of late. So did Florida State and so did Auburn for this guy. But he wound up going to TCU. And this guy is an absolute athletic freak. Uh, he ran an 11.2 meter dash, which I think would have put him in uh, the top 20, like top 27 of NCAA track meet two years ago. Uh, but he is a uh, high school senior now. So he's coming to TCU. And he can flat out fly. Uh, and linebackers in the area of need for TCU after this season anyway. So he's a guy that'll be stepping up in a big way. A couple late ads there that made this class look a little bit better. Obviously, Sean Robinson was a guy that uh, was highly sought after and uh, highly recruited. Uh, came to TCU as a top six uh, rated quarterback uh, by most of the services, top 10 in that range as a dual threat quarterback. Uh, had to step in for Kenny Hill a few times. Uh, I remember one game at Iowa State on the road in a loss a couple of years ago where he stepped in uh, for Kenny Hill, but uh, much anticipated from him. Uh, last season, obviously, did not go well for him. Uh, he was the guy that uh, lined up against Ohio State, played a decent game, uh, but had his hits and misses, then got injured. Uh, then he leaves um, sometime in December, I think, is when he announced that going to Missouri, probably thought uh, the path was paved for him. 
Uh, but Kelly Bryant steps in and now he's got some competition there. I think competition's all over the place for these guys if they want to play at a decent program, but they seem to be uh, flocking to uh, wherever they think they have the opportunity. So was Sean Robinson moving on because he felt there was going to be serious competition there or were other things going on? Yeah, it, there's definitely going to be some competition coming his way. Uh, Justin Rogers, the guy they got in the 2017 class, who or 2018 class rather, who was a four-star out of Louisiana, uh, but his big issue is his first game of a senior year of high school tore every ligament up in his knee, uh, didn't play at all his senior year, came here, fully expected him to med medically redshirt this year as a freshman. He actually got into the cheese bowl for a hot minute for a drive, so he's his foot is getting better. His knee is, is fully cleared. Uh, he is still it, it, dealing with that drop foot issue, which if you're familiar with the Dallas Cowboys, Jalen Smith, the linebacker, had that and misses most of his entire rookie season with the Cowboys uh, after playing in the Fiesta Bowl and getting hurt uh, in that game. So he's still dealing with that a little bit, but if he's healthy enough to play in the Cheese Bowl, I think by, by August he'll be ready to go. And he's the main competition for Sean Robinson. Uh, but also in this class, they brought in Max Duggan, another four-star dual threat guy uh, from Iowa. Uh, so, so I think it's a kind of a guy where you can come in and and uh yeah council council bluffs iowa to make sure i got the city in there right so this is gonna be some competition here so they knew they were bringing in two back-to-back -back four stars after sean robinson so three straight four stars in the class and these classes and and it's gonna be tough for sean uh so i hope he does well in missouri we're all rooting for him um but this year he doesn't have to worry about that he has to sit out this year anyway and kelly bryant's got one year left for transfer for grad transfer rules anyway so he'll be the starter in 2020 and i think they'll be done with their bowl ban by then too so uh, best luck to him there's plenty of competition here at tcu for a quarterback good points to clean up there for me billy thank you so much i had uh forgotten about uh the transfer situation in regards to him it seems as though uh, more than ever before, these kids are able to get around uh, those uh, those restrictions and able to make that work. But uh, Sean Robinson, yeah, in play for uh, a season from now in 2020, and Kelly Bryant only has one year left. Thanks for uh, clarifying that. Um, I know it's very early. You got to look at this team in the spring. You got to get a lot of news out of uh, spring camp and then going through August. You don't know who the starting quarterback is going to be. But just in regards to what is generally the expectation for this program, considering um, a disappointing 2018, but you finish off with a bowl win, you do finish off with a winning record and had to, to fight to get to postseason play and finish seven and six based on the personnel losses, based on this recruiting class and who may have an impact. Where's the trajectory? What would you think would be the expectations coming up this fall? So this is a team that is loaded everywhere but quarterback. If they had a, an experienced player at quarterback, oh, there's my dog. She's, I've been trying to keep her happy this whole time. She jumped around in the background. No, the, the dogs. That may make us go viral or something. Go. That's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> messing up my bed, but whatever. Um, yeah, so this is the one spot that they need as quarterback. They, are, they bring back their entire offensive line. Jalen Rager will be a first-round pick whenever he comes out at wide receiver. Uh, they bring back both their running backs. They added two more four stars in this class at running backs. They're loaded in the backfield. Uh, really, they need a second wide receiver and a talented quarterback. And this offense is made to win a Big 12 title. Uh, the defense, uh, same, similar story. They lost both starting defensive ends. They'll be playing in the NFL. They'll be probably second-day draft picks and Ben Bandigou and LJ Collier. Um, but that's really all they lost. They bring back all their safeties, all their corners, the linebackers. Uh, this is a team that is loaded. Uh, and ready to go, and that's why they were pushing so hard for Jalen Hurts. Uh, they had gotten him instead of Oklahoma. This is this would have been the Big 12 favorite, in my opinion. Uh, but with that happening, you've got to, the road obviously goes uh, to the Big 12 title goes through Norman once again, uh, and UT's bring back a lot of people too. So those are the top two. I think UT's or TC's right in that third spot right now, pushing those top two. But it depends on if Justin Rogers is healthy, if this uh, freshman from Iowa, Max Duggan, can really step it up. Uh, this is an offense that's built to run and built to play well now. This is the year that coming into last year, I was like, man, I wish they were playing Ohio State in 2019, knowing they were built to make a run this year. If Sean Robinson had played all last year and stuck around, you have an experienced quarterback there. Um, but that's just how the breaks go. Uh, they're going to go with with Max Duggan or Justin Rogers. And I forgot to mention they got the Alex Delton, the transfer from Kansas State, a grad transfer. Uh, but he's more of a, a, a wheels guy versus a, a pocket passer and an arms guy. So I kind of vision him as a maybe a goal line package situation, a guy that can use his legs, get a little bit more, do some weird things. They, they like to run the wildcat in those situations, the wild frog, they call it here. But they'll use the same running back who's never thrown a pass once uh, since his like, sophomore year of high school. So 
you know they're going to run the ball every time. They've done the last three years, and he runs it every single time, usually to the right. And I think people are starting to realize that. So if they use Alex Delton uh, as some sort of change of pace in that situation, maybe that leads to more success in the red zone uh, and another wrinkle to this offense. So there, there's that in play too. Uh, but this team is, is loaded except for a quarterback. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. Again, if you love college football, this is your place to be for the best discussion, debate, and analysis. Uh, give us a like, give us a comment, let us know what you think about TCU and our other National Signing Day reports that we've uh, posted from all over the country. We got Billy Wessels on the line from Purple Menace. Billy, hopefully we can have you back soon. Preview spring camp, look at the schedule, all sorts of things, position battles, and the like. Anytime, Mark.